what, how is that not even your only yellow focus? DTF Garage Vacation. I'm Brad. This is Heavy. There's my escape. <laughs> We're here with Michael. I'm Michael. Hello. Hello. We're here at a uh, basically a Focus junkyard. Yeah. We got uh, the Long Boy wagon up there. It's junk. And uh, this hundred fifty dollar pile of shit here. But that's not what we're here for. What are we here for, Michael? It's junk. That, that one runs the best out of all of them. Though. We're here for the Steeda Focus. This is what we're here for. Why don't you tell me about this Steeda Focus? Uh, well, right now it looks like crap. <laughs> um, this car was made by SEMA back in 2001. Um, this is Steeda Focus number 20. Um, after Steeda built the car, it was bought by a company in South Florida called Chaotic Creations. Um, once Chaotic had the car, uh, I'm not exactly sure what all they modified, but obviously the first thing uh, appeared to be a really aggressive suspension. It was on air ride before, and then paint jobs. Uh, this car's had paint jobs, paint jobs, paint jobs. It's had everything from tribal designs to flames to um, it was solid yellow once, um, and then also two different iterations of the tribal design you see on it now. Um, we had to get rid of the original the, the original wheels to it uh, because the chrome was tore up enough and pitted enough that the wheel guy said it should be fixed, so it's getting new wheels. And in and among it, it had a hydro-locked motor. Um, the car's a flood car. We assumed it was in at least one of the hurricanes. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of evidence that the car sat underwater for a little while. Um, so. As part of the overhaul, obviously, like the motor's pulled out, transmission's pulled out. Um, I'm in the middle right now of swapping the interior out of it because it had critters living in the car before. Um, these are the beautiful Z3 fenders and an air intake I destroyed. Um, it's a pretty cool car. I mean, everything's obviously everything shaved off of it. Uh, it has no fuel door, no antenna, no handles, no hatch trim, no trims, no anything. Oh, there's no third brake light on there either, is there? Nope. Uh, third brake light is also shaved out. Um, it's got harness to put the tail lights and the slits there in the rear of the bumper. Um, now in true 2000s fashion, it is straight pipe with uh, a tremendous fart pan. Because why the fuck wouldn't it be? This car came with lots of goodies. Um, when I first pulled it up, it had things like Steeda short ram, uh, Steeda climate control knobs, seats, uh, seat belt covers. Um, it's got paint mash mirrors, uh, inside and outside. Uh, it's got black and yellow leather visors, door inserts, seats. Um, it came with a charcoal interior. It was the best of SVT before SVT was invented because obviously this is a, a pre-SVT car. So it's got, you know, a lot of the nifty things, but then you don't see things that people come to expect in new cars, like big brake packages, stuff like that. At, the, at this point in time, your options are basically your stock, stock fronts and drum brakes, or spending three or four thousand dollars on a bare brake kit, um, which they're still worth that money today. Um, but I mean, it's a it's a pretty neat car. I mean, it's got a lot of things shaved off it. It's I don't not a lot of the bodywork is Bondo. Um, the majority of anything that's shaved off has all been shaved off with sheet metal, um, which is big money. And half the reason why the car looks so good, because if it was all Bondo, the car would look like ass. Yeah. It would look so bad if, this, if all the shaved stuff was Bondo, there'd be flaking and more bubbling and stuff. But the only bubbling that's prominent on the car is a little bit of rust where there were some things welded under the paint. Other than that, it's a pretty cool car. Um, we decided not to go with the, the Focus platform motor. Um, I can see the uh, turbo peeking out of the uh, bottom here. You want to tell me about this engine swap? We're uh, going to be putting a K24A2 um, into, into this car. Um, this motor, I believe, when I checked, this motor is out of an 06. Cord. 
Uh, but then you'd also find this motor in Honda Odyssey, and then uh, Acura RSX. Uh, but we're gonna be we're gonna be using this bad boy with a Honda uh, Honda K Pro ECU. Um, RSX, it's an RSX platform computer for the car, um, but the Honda is going to make the car be able to run full standalone. Um, it's on map sensors, so I get to do cool stuff like run short intake piping and all that stuff. Don't have to worry about math, don't have to worry about idle air control valves or anything like that. It's going to be it's new, a new school, new school twist to an old school concept. There goes my, there goes my wagon. Say bye, wagon. Bye, girlfriend. Um, this is a uh, PFE style 6062 turbo. Uh, it's got a four inch inlet. It is made by Rev9. El Cheapo, Shanghai Spoolie Boy. <laughs> eBay special uh, fancy turbo manifold. It's actually really surprising because wastegate turbo and and manifold all included is less than a thousand dollars. So that's benefits of Honda stuff. It's uh, true. Because you can spend twelve hundred bucks on just your manifold. Um, but otherwise, I mean, I, it it's all going to plug and play. I've got obviously I've kind of got to work out in my head how I'm going to make it, how I'm going to make it fit, how I'm going to make it work. Um, we're aiming for low to mid 500s out of this out of this car real time all the time. Um, it's going to be looking at cool things like boost by gear, two step launch control, all that stuff. Because the car's not going to have traction control, so take traction control off a 500 or more horsepower car, you wouldn't be able to drive it. So this car is going to be. I mean, you'll be able to take it out, get groceries with it, and drive it modestly if you want to, and if you if you want to wake it up and and throw on a, a hot tune. And you wanna, you know, you wanna go ahead and turn up your boost. It's we're gonna get it dyno tuned or whatever to take as much boost as we can possibly put through it without really feeling like we're gonna rush and let the bottom in. Uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna turn it down and and drive it. Um, we go for bigger numbers. Like we could go for more than 700 if we put in. Um, it could be uh, valves and retainers, Supertech brand. Um, and then Skunk 2 Pro Race 2 boost cams um, to go in over those valves and then head studs um, because the these motors are well over about 550 it's a Russian roulette on do you pop the bottom end or do you lift the head off the motor um, so but it's I mean it's a pretty safe bet that we can get at least 500 out of it before we get into like the the risky range because most of the K24 guys I'll tell you over about 550 the, the bottom ends of these are Russian roulette because they're 10.5 to 1 compression so they're they're pushing out the juice but I mean modifications to the motor we've had to do little to nothing um, like it's going to be getting an aftermarket fuel rail and it's going to be going to a return fuel system as opposed to a returnless um, it's getting from the stock. I think their stock injectors are 40 pound, whatever that'd be in CCs, what 660 or something like that. Yeah, it's closer to like 440, something like that. Um, <clears throat> I'm an American, so I'm going to do my fuel injectors for my gallons for a minute. Um, you want to pop that door open for us? No, hell yeah, I can pop it. Show us the uh, wonderment there. So yeah, the car's got Lambo doors. <laughs> Straight out of 2001. Straight out of 2001. Big entryway though, so you get the bonus that if you're somebody like Steve Powell, this is the focus for you. <laughs> you're like, good day, sir. You six foot seven, but only weigh 120 pounds. Have a problem getting in and out of your car because you're so fucking tall? Just move the whole car out of the fucking way. 